Welcome, in this video we will tackle a few more related rates problems. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one. An expandable sphere is being filled with liquid at a constant rate from a tap. Imagine a water balloon connected to a faucet. When the radius of the sphere is 3 inches, the radius is increasing at 2 inches per minute. How fast is the liquid coming out of the tap? Okay, so let's go ahead and maybe just draw a picture to get us started with this one, and then we'll uh, uh, consider the variables that are at play. So we have um, water coming out of a tap. So maybe there's um, you know, a faucet coming out here from your sink, and uh, it's maybe filling up this circular shape. Maybe it's a balloon. We'll just draw that. Um, to get started. All right, so water is uh, dripping in here at a constant rate again. And when we consider the, the water dripping in at a constant rate, it says that the sphere um, is currently, the radius, we'll call that R, is currently three inches that radius value is 3 inches and is currently changing uh, or increasing at a rate of 2 inches per minute. So again, when we think about rate of change, think derivative, that's dr dt of 2 inches per minute. So we have the uh, radius and the rate of change of that radius. If I consider now how fast is the liquid coming out of the tap, well, let's just consider what type of variable that is. Um, if we consider how much water is coming out of the tap, we're really thinking of the amount of water. So that's going to be considering as the volume of water. How much is actually, in other words, going into the balloon and expanding this balloon out, this circular figure. So if we take a look uh, over here, we have the equation of the volume of a sphere. That might be helpful to us here. Um, so that's the three-dimensional sphere uh, volume equation. So let's consider um, really what we want here is the derivative of the volume of this sphere dv dt. If I can go out and solve for this, I think I know would know how fast the liquid is coming out of the tap or uh, going into my expandable sphere. So let's take a look at the volume equation. We'll have v equal to our 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we'll take a look at taking its derivative with respect to time because we want to relate, again, the real uh, the rate of change of the radius and the rate of change of the volume with respect to time. So let's go ahead and take our derivative here with respect to t. And in this case, t, this t variable, is uh, representing time in minutes because these things are happening in minutes. So the t variable is re representing time in minutes. So uh, taking a look at the derivative here, we'll have the dv dt on the left side of the equation. And then we'll need to take an um, implicit derivative here on the right as well. We'll have the constants 4 thirds pi. Those are all constants we'll leave behind. And then we'll take the derivative of r cubed. That will be 3 r squared. And then we need to take that implicit a chain piece, which is going to be dr dt, because we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So there's our complete derivative here. Certainly there's a little bit of simplification we can make here, so let's go ahead and try to do that. Uh, notice that we have a multiple of 3 in the numerator and in the denominator. We can cancel those out to 1. And we'll rewrite this one more time before we evaluate. We'll have dv dt uh, 
is going to be equal to 4 pi is left here, r squared, and then we'll have dr dt. And it looks like we have the components we need, and there, it looks like they're in the right units as well, both in inches. The radius is currently 3 inches. The rate of change is 2 inches per minute. So let's go ahead and evaluate those. We have 4 pi. R squared is going to be uh, 3 inches quantity squared. And then we'll have our dr dt, which is going to be 2 inches per minute. So if we uh, evaluate this, we will have 4 pi times 9 inches squared when we square those and its units, and then 2 inches per minute. When we evaluate uh, this and simplify, we have 4, 9, and 2. That will give us a uh, 72 or 8 times 9, we could say that's going to be 72 times the pi sitting there. And looking at the units, we have uh, units of inches squared, inches per minute. And so if we multiply those together, those units become an inches cubed per minute. And that should make sense to us because we're taking the rate of change of a volume, which should be in three dimensions. So 72 pi inches cubed per minute as the rate at which our sphere is expanding um, with the water or any liquid really. So 72 pi inches cubed per minute. And that will finish up that question. So let's take a look at a uh, second question, and this is kind of a, a famous problem considering the sliding ladder. Um, let's jump into this, another geometric um, application. So it says that a ladder is sliding down a wall with the distance between the top of the wall and the base of the ladder is increasing at three feet per hour. And the ladder is currently 12 feet away from the wall and 16 feet above the ground. Okay, so with this description, again, since this is kind of more of a physical problem, um, it's a great idea to draw a picture. So let's go ahead and start by drawing a picture. And it doesn't have to be fancy. We're just going to try to draw a ladder that's leaning up against a wall. So here's kind of my room the base, and I have a ladder, it's going to be leaning up against the wall, I'll call this L for my ladder. Again, it doesn't really have to be fancy. And let's just take a look at the pieces of information that we're told about. So we know that this ladder is going to be falling. In other words, we're going to be going down in this direction, which means the base of that ladder is going to be pushed to the right. The ladder is, again, 12 feet away from the wall. If I wanted to consider some variables here, if I'm 12 feet away from the wall, uh, we might maybe just call that the base, call that maybe B, as 12 feet. 12 feet away from the wall. And we're also told that the uh, ladder is 16 feet above the ground. So the top of the ladder here is 16 feet above the ground, so we'll call that maybe the h, the height of the ladder at this moment in time, is equal to 16 feet. So two important details. Uh, the other thing that's uh, told to us is a rate. So if we look back at that first sentence, a ladder is sliding down the wall where the distance between the top or the bottom of the wall and the base of the ladder is increasing. So if we consider the bottom of the wall and the base of the ladder, that would be these two points right here. 
bottom of the wall and the base of the ladder, we call that the base, the B, that length there is increasing at three feet per hour. So in other words, uh, if we wanted to consider this as a rate, we've already said that this distance here between those two points is going to be the value B. And so generally we could say that this is going to be the dB dt, the derivative or the rate of change of the base of this picture, is going to be uh, 3 feet per hour. So that's my first rate. And part A here is asking how quickly is the top of the ladder falling? So I want to know how to the top of the ladder is falling. Well, this is the second rate that we're going to want to consider, and that is the rate of the height. So the, really the late rate of the height of the ladder, how fall, far or how fast that black point on the top of the ladder is falling down to here, that's going to give me the uh, rate at which the ladder is falling. We would call that dh dt. That's the rate that I want to solve for in this problem. Okay, so I've got a rate. I've got a couple pieces of information, but I am kind of searching for an equation to relate those two rates. That's the name of the game. So let's consider what we have. We really have, notice, uh, based on the picture we have here, there's really a, a right triangle going on here. And that's actually what we're going to try to use to relate the base and the height. Notice that I've also given a variable L to the length of this ladder. We know that in this problem, the length of the ladder is not changing. That's always going to be the same. And so we can take advantage of that by considering uh, the Pythagorean theorem. We know the length L is going to be unchanging. We just need to solve for what that might be. So let's start by considering this as a right triangle. We know the base and the height of that right triangle. We just want to know the hypotenuse L. So we can say that the length L quantity squared is going to be equal to the quantity h squared plus the quantity b squared. That Pythagorean theorem is going to govern this equation, regardless of the uh, value of h or b. Now, to solve for what that L quantity might be, or even that L squared quantity would be, uh, we can use the current height and the current base length. So we can say that L squared is equal to h squared, that's going to be 16 squared, plus the base, which is 12 quantity squared. We do a little bit of computation here. We'll have 16 squared as 256. 12 squared is giving us 144 if we square that value in our calculator. And we can add these two together uh, to get an even 400. Now, certainly, if we take that square root, we'll find that the positive value for this length is just going to be L equals 20 feet. Um, this is helpful, but it's not maybe necessary to have that, because what we're really interested in is that L squared quantity. And I'll show you why, because this, what we set up at the top, this equation L squared equals h squared plus b squared, that's really the equation that relates h, b, and l. So that's the one we're going to use to consider the rest of the problem. And we know that l squared is equal to 400. We know that, again, l squared here equals 400. So with that knowledge, we can actually press forward and write the equation um, that we're going to consider for the derivative. So we can have that 400, that's the L squared, is going to be equal to H squared plus B squared at any one time, regardless of where the latter is any one time.
Okay, now that I have the uh, equation that relates the height and the base, I can now consider a derivative with respect to time. So let's go ahead and jump into that work. I'm going to take this equation, and we're going to take again the derivative with respect to time. So let's go from uh, the left to the right. The derivative of just a 400 is going to give me just 0. Derivative with respect to time of h squared is going to be 2h. And then we'll have to take the inner derivative of the derivative of h with respect to t. We call that dh dt. We'll next have uh, the sum. Derivative of b squared becomes 2b and dbt, db dt for that implicit derivative. Okay, and we know a good amount of information in that equation. We already know the current height, the current base length, and the db dt, the rate of change of the base. So let's go ahead and evaluate this expression um, where we can. So we'll have 0 is equal to, we'll have 2 times the height. The height here is going to be 16 feet. And then the dh dt is the unknown. We do not know that. We'll add to that, we have 2 times the base, which is 12 feet. And then we have the dB dt, which is 3 feet per hour. So let's take a look at simplifying this structure a little bit. We have the 0 is equal to, we'll have 32 feet dh dt plus uh, we'll have a 3, a 2, and a 12 all together. That will be uh, 72 feet squared per hour. If we combine those units, we can do a little bit of subtraction here. It um, doesn't matter which one you do, but we can go ahead and subtract 72 feet squared per hour. So we get our 72 feet squared per hour equal to 32 feet uh, times dh dt. And then we can divide by the 32 feet. So dividing by 32 feet. To get our result here for dh dt. Uh, notice a couple things here that first the units here will cancel, the feet will cancel with one of those feet measurements. So we'll just have feet per hour when all said and done. And then uh, we do have a negative value here, negative 72 divided by 32. Um, if you evaluate this, uh, that value should be negative 2.25, and again, feet per hour. It's going to be your dh dt. So if I wanted to summarize this, uh, how fast or how quickly is the top of the ladder falling here? We want to be careful with this interpretation, but we could say that the ladder is falling at a rate 
of 2.25 feet per hour. Uh, the negative is telling us the direction that it is falling, it's not rising. So uh, the ladder, specifically here, we could say that the ladder is falling at a rate of 2.25 feet per hour based on those qualifications. <clears throat> we do have a second part, part B, to this question. And this is going to be considering really at this current stage, is the area under the ladder increasing or decreasing at this moment? So this last question concerns the area under the ladder. And since we already have that picture, we can just consider that picture again um, to see what we're working with. If I wanted to consider the area under this ladder right now, if I just kind of shade that right here, if I looked at it from the side, like I am here, we really have the area of a triangle. And again, that triangle would have an area equal to one half times the base times the height of that triangle. And again, I want to know whether or not the area is going to be increasing or decreasing if I took a picture right here um, in this very moment when the height is 16 and the base is 12 feet. So let's consider uh, if that's increasing or decreasing by finding its rate of change or what we'd call GADT, the rate of change of the area in that moment in time. So the first thing I want to consider is again taking the derivative with respect to time of this area function. So we have D a dt, and then derivative with respect to t of the right side. So uh, the left side just becomes da dt, and that, not a lot of work there. The right side, in, on the other hand, is a product rule because we have b times h. So we want to be careful work, working this product rule out. So let's consider really uh, two functions here. We have one half b, and then we'll have a second function we'll just call h, just to split this up into two. So one half b is our first function, h is our second function. So first thing I can do is, again, we could say taking the power rule, I want to take the derivative of the one half b. We would get uh, just one half. Derivative of b is 1, but taking the derivative with respect to t, we would call that db dt. So that's the derivative of the b function. Then we would say multiply that just by h. That's the second function. And we'll add to that our first function, which is 1 half b, 1 half times b. And then we'll want to take the derivative of the h function. So we'll do that in red. The derivative of the h function, well, it's just going to be 1 times dh dt. So that implicit derivative, we have two rates there on the right side of that equation. OK, looking good. Uh, now we can just consider from the previous Part A, what are all the components that we're going to need here? Let's go ahead and see if we can actually evaluate this right here. So dA dt, this is going to be 1 half times the dB dt. We knew that from the previous part of the problem, that's 3 feet per hour. Times the height at this moment in time is 16 feet. Add that to uh, another one half here, times the base length is 12 feet. And then finally, dh dt, that's the final amount that we, uh, rate that we found in our part A, 
we said that was negative 2.25 feet per hour. So if we go ahead and uh, consider evaluating the rest here, we'll have this uh, first side we'll highlight. Just to see what we're doing here in blue. We'll have 1 half times 3 times 16. That will give us a 24. And again, feet times feet. So the feet squared per hour. And then we'll have a second part. I'll highlight in, let's say, green. We'll have 1 half times 12 times negative 2.25. And uh, I think we should get negative 13.5 here. And that's, again, going to be in feet squared per hour, same units as before. And if I subtract those two quantities, we should get one final result. And that should be, uh, looks like 10.5 feet squared uh, per hour. There we go. So taking a look at this final result, if I wanted to know, well, am I increasing my area or decreasing my area underneath the ladder at this moment in time? Well, I think we just found this is a positive result, meaning that the area is growing uh, by 10.5 feet per uh, feet squared per hour, and so we can say that this uh, the area under the ladder is increasing. Mm, at this time. by uh, 10.5 feet squared per hour. So we are definitely increasing. Um, if this quantity was negative, that means we would be decreasing the area at this moment in time. The instantaneous rate of change would be uh, a decreasing one if it was negative. All right. So there's our ladder problem and maybe one added um, question using the product rule for the implicit derivatives. So thanks for watching. We'll come back with one more video on these related rates. Um, hope to see you in the next video.